I've been here about 16 years. Well, for one thing, I, I really love the student, but being able to share, you know, my knowledge and my um, basically love of the career. It's, it's been a really good, good career for me. Um, it's been wonderful opportunities for growth. There's things that I'm doing that I never would have imagined I could have. They're here as a support and as, you know, to teach you the fundamentals and to teach you how to be creative. Julie Dillenberg teaches in both classroom and lab environments. We do try to keep the um, lab experiences in particular as close to what they're going to see out in industry as we can. Um, and we do that by having our advisory committee meet at, at least once a year. At North Hennepin Community College, Eugenia Paulus introduces chemical technology to students in practical ways. She is very much able to get down to your level of understanding of chemistry and explain to you using landmarks you are comfortable with. I found him to be very energetic, very enthusiastic, very active in class, and with a wide uh, knowledge in chemistry. However, when he came to lab, I found that unfortunately, he wasn't very well prepared for lab. He hadn't been exposed to many of the laboratory skills that he should know at this point. To improve student success, Eugenia developed a tutorial for underprepared students funded by a Center for Teaching and Learning grant. The tutorial is online so students like Arif can access it whenever he needs to. One of the websites was, I believe, at MIT. You can actually watch the experiment we would be doing the next day in lab uh, in detail expression in the video and then you'd come fully prepared. He worked with me on the tutorial and at the end of the semester he found that he was able to do more than what the other students could do because he had spent so much of time practicing these laboratory skills. Arif is currently working on an advanced research experiment. He is one of my top laboratory uh, students right now. He will actually be presenting at an undergraduate research symposium in the near future. At Inver Hills Community College, faculty work with groups of students called learning communities. Learning community students interact closely with faculty members. I have more of an openness with the professors as well. So I mean, I can talk to any one of my professors about any questions I have or extensions that I may need. It was exciting to work with a group who wanted to be a group who wanted more, and that drove me to seek out more information, um, to, to do things differently, come up with more creative ideas. And it was great to be able to discuss these ideas with other faculty in other programs. Learning community courses are led by experienced instructors who cooperate in planning their classes. At St. Paul College, instructors such as Daniel Polnock also play a vital role with campus and system level planning. He's very heavily involved in the committees on campus. He's very heavily involved in our um, accreditation kinds of efforts and understanding that broad perspective, I think, both from his background and what we do at the college, I think, just has um, a powerful impact on the students. At Rochester Community and Technical College, Julie Rodakowski is leading the effort to bring faculty and students from Winona State, the U of M, and her own college closer together at University Center Rochester. She's using funding from the system's initiatives to promote excellence in student learning to create a comprehensive learning center at the University Center. This is the UCR Learning Center. Um, it's been a comprehensive endeavor that involves disciplines ranging from English and math to reading, English as a second language, and now we've added the sciences. And uh, Julie's our coordinator for the entire Learning Center. And this is a perfect example of her leadership style and that she's empowered all of the faculty coordinators, the um, professional tutors, the staff who work here. We want it to be for all levels of students and have all different kinds of activities in the Learning Center. And I think we've, we've, we've achieved that. On the other side of the Rochester Community and Technical College campus is where we find who the students and staff call the flower lady. And in many respects, Robin Fruth Dugstad is that, but she's also much more. Then I'm gonna use my work with my myrtle. That's this plant material here. 
Teaching floral design is just one of her responsibilities. Sand is also sometimes a common element in oriental design. Um, and you don't always have to have water in an oriental design. Robin teaches in and coordinates the horticulture technology program. I interact with marketing. I maintain our budget. I advise students. I water the greenhouse uh, and maintain the greenhouse. After a previous floral design instructor left unexpectedly to take another job, Robin, whose academic training was in agriculture and horticulture and who did her graduate work in plant genetics, agreed to teach the course. Still, she felt she needed more training specifically in floral design. During the summer, I completed a kind of a intensive study course in floral design. She also started working and volunteering in several floral shops around Rochester to gain practical on-the-job experience. Today, her students benefit from her industry experience. No, thank you. That's a good recommendation. I didn't even think about it. Todd Moran, an adjunct faculty member at Riverland Community College, works closely with his colleague, Suzette Overby. Suzette is the coordinator of Riverland's Human Services Program. She's also Todd's mentor in a doctoral program in which they are both students. She's there. She's supportive. And, and she's going to really go out the extra mile for, for the people that are adjuncts here as well. Suzette is also the advisor for the student organization DEEDS, which stands for Dedication, Education, Empowerment, Diversity, and Services. Suzette arranges service learning experiences to the inner city of Chicago. It's a great way to start uh, getting out there, you know, getting your name out there for future jobs or um, in employment. Century College faculty members are involved with planning new collaborative spaces on campus. There's a, an old adage that just says that you kind of take down the barriers and, uh, between all the creative folks and all the folks, uh, and you give them a space, something amazing is going to happen. Kind of a little flood of light in the early Gothic period. This is like colored by falling on things. So Neil Johnson is a faculty member in the art department and is part of the planning team for the new fabrication, or fab lab. We had engineering, and we had the art department, and just a kind of a plethora of folks that were interested in what could, what could happen there. We all got together and started brainstorming, and um, uh, one thing led to another, and we uh, started envisioning the Fab Lab as really a, a meeting place of different types of minds. The Fab Lab idea originated at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT. Through the network, we're able to establish uh, video and audio connections to other Fab Lab centers throughout the world. So we're part of the U.S. Fab Lab network, which is then associated with MIT. This was the Tim Grebner is an engineering instructor and also the director for the program. Fab Lab is a collection of off-the-shelf fabrication tools that are networked together in a computer network where students and faculty can come in and make just about anything. This is our, our heat sink and our... The wind turbine was a project that was initiated by the engineering club. And that's what's exciting, is that uh, now we can bring uh, an artist into the Fab Lab, and even if they don't have a lot of uh, experience uh, well, with ECAT or uh, some of the design programs, they can pair up with a, an engineering student, for instance, and uh, work together on a project collaboratively, and um, I think it's wonderful. The Minnesota State Colleges and Universities faculty all have unique roles and responsibilities they share with the students. Okay. Okay. 